Hi, today I am going to talk about cell division. First, we are going to talk about cell division, what are different stages and how we came to know about those stages. So far, there is we have discussed in the earlier video about pulse change experiment. This experiment is very simple. So what we are doing, we have a flask or we have a petri dish. So there will be cells growing. These will be asynchronous cells. Asynchronous cells. Asynchronous cells means that they will be dispersed all through the cell cycle. So we are not synchronizing them, we are not putting them in one stage. So naturally they are dispersed all through the cell cycle. So then what we are doing, we are just pulsing, pulsing with radio labelled thymidine. H31 labelled thymidine nucleotide we are just inserting our head over here for 30 minutes so obviously as thymidine is one of the building block of the uh, DNA nucleotide so among these cells only cells which will be capturing this radio labeled thymidine those will be in synthetic phase. Synthetic phase or S phase. What do you mean by synthetic phase? Those cells, they are synthesizing DNA. New DNA synthesis is going on. So the only cells via autoradiograph autoradiograph and observation observation under microscope or under any technique if we can observe the cells and if we can auto radiograph so the only cells which capture the radio label thymidine those will be in S phase or synthetic phase rest of the cells if they are not doing any DNA synthesis so obviously those cells they are in other phase of the cell cycle. So, mm, so based on this proportion, based on this ratio, the number of the cells that have incorporated a radio label thymidine, hot cells, they are they will show radioactivity. Radio labeled cells out of total number of cells total number of cells this ratio it should tell us about the duration of this S phase so uh, based on total cell number we came to know how long this particular S phase is similarly we can uh, as we have already discussed we can uh, determine the duration of the total cell cycle by observing a cell if it goes from one cell stage to the two cell stage if from one cell we have two cells and the total number total duration of the time that is being taken from going to one cell stage to the two cell stage it should give us total duration of cell cycle cell cycle duration so we know cell cycle duration we know out of total number of cells how many cells are radio labeled how many cells are synthesizing DNA so from this ratio we can get exact duration of the S phase so proportional ratio the cells which are in the S phase out of total cells because longer the phase more cells will be in that particular phase 
suppose if this S case, if it is of longer duration, if it is of longer duration, so as I have told you about the cell cycle, it's a sequence of steps, well-defined steps or stages through which a cell passes and then it undergoes duplication from one cell to the two cell. So if this phase is longer, if S phase is longer, so obviously number of cells will be greater in that particular phase. Okay, till now we came to know about S phase duration, total cell cycle duration. Next thing, next simple question. If S phase is followed by mitosis, uh, you recall from my earlier lecture, I told you that under light microscope we can only say, we can only visualize there are two stages. There is, uh, S, uh, there is interphase and then there is M phase. So, if all the interface constitutes of S phase, so obviously if we will increase the pulse, increase pulse, pulse of thymidine, S31, radio level thymidine, if it will increase from 30 minutes to suppose 1 to 1.5 hours. So, obviously, if S phase is followed by M phase, so we should be getting some of the cells, they will be in the M phase. If they are close by, if they are close by, suppose after S phase, there is M phase. After interphase, there is M phase. But in the interphase, there is only one phase, S phase. So, uh, if we can increase the pulse duration, we should get some of the cells which we should get all the cells which are in the M phase and they are radio labeled. Contrary to this expectation, it has been found that if you increase the pulse from 30 minutes, half an hour to one and one and a half hour duration, still you cannot find any of the cell, any of the mitotic cell which is having radio labeling, which has incorporated the thymidine. Uh, radio level thymine. What does that indicate? We can infer from it inter inference. Our inference should be that see mitotic cells they are not incorporating any radial activity. So no synthesis is happening during mitotic stage. Clear? Because we didn't see any cells which have incorporated radioactivity. Second inference is that uh, as we had increased the duration from 30 minutes pulse, we are going to one and a half hour duration pulse uh, with uh, radio level thymine. Still, we are not finding any mitotic cell over here. So, we can say there is some gap time between S phase and M phase, and that gap time is called as gap to period. So how we came to know about this particular phase, about G2 phase, because if S phase and M phase, if they were subsequent to each other, if they were following each other, so if we increase the um, pulse, so we should get obviously some of the cells in the mitosis, but contrary to this, we are not getting any cells in the mitosis, so it indicates between this phase and between S phase and mitosis, there is one particular gap period. That gap period has been named as G2 phase. So, next question. How will you know about the duration of this particular phase? What I am talking here, I am talking, you have to know what is the duration of duration of uh, G2 phase from your experiments from your inferences it's clear there is some gap period between S and the mitosis but how big that gap period is so for that there is uh, this experiment we are using the same pulse stage experiment the experiment which were performed in 1950s uh, so I will go back to that petri dish experiment 
we have different number of cells different cells they are growing over here then we are pulsing with radio labeled thymidine thymidine okay once we will start pulsing we are just incorporating the radioactivity over here so uh, cells which are in the S phase obviously those cells they are synthesizing DNA we have this double stranded DNA so suppose we have a cell that is just in they just need to incorporate a lost patch of nucleotides over here it needs to add only few nucleotides then it will complete the S phase and then it will move to the G2 phase so if we are adding the thymidine so obviously this radio level thymidine it will be incorporated over here and this S phase is done for that particular cell then that particular cell will move to G2 phase once that particular cell will move to G2 phase it will complete the G2 phase and uh, it will enter into the M phase so the first mitotic cell which is radio labeled that should tell us about the duration of this particular G2 phase. So from the time of infusing radioactivity, once we are infusing the radio, radio label thymidine, suppose there was a cell which was in the later or last stage of S phase, need only few strips of nucleotides to be incorporated. Like here I have shown, only few nucleotides need to be incorporated, then that particular cell, it will complete this particular S phase. So, from the time of infusing to the time of finding first mitotic cell, finding the mitotic cells, which are radio labeled, that duration should tell, that timing, that time should tell us about the duration of the G2 phase. I hope you understand this, because uh, once we are infusing this radio labeled thymidine, so suppose a cell was over here, it needs only few stretches of nucleotides to be incorporated, then it has doubled the DNA, the S phase is completed, so it will move to G2 phase, it will move to the G2 phase, and ultimately it will come here. Mitotic cells, we can visualize those, they have compact chromosomes, compact DNA. So once we found a mitotic cell having compact DNA and that cell is radio labeled. So from the duration, from the timing of infusing and the time of finding this particular cell, it will obviously tell us about the duration or span of this G2 phase. Okay. Uh, Coming to the S phase, S phase is called synthetic phase. Most uh, uh, important thing about this phase is that you, DNA synthesis is going on during S phase. Uh, in addition to DNA synthesis, S phase is part of the interface. There is histone synthesis also. Histone. Uh, you may recall from the from your knowledge of molecular biology that histones they have been packaging DNA packaging of DNA or uh, genetic material so the histones which are synthesized during this phase those histones they will help in packaging the DNA so that in mitosis we have well packed DNA and we can take the sister chromatids to the opposite poles of the cell. So one more function or one more thing happening in during this phase, during S phase is that we have synthesis of uh, histones. Okay, I told you about uh, total cell cycle duration, total cell cycle duration that you will assess by following a cell from one cell stage to the uh, two cell stage from going from one cell to the two cells 
uh, S phase, I told you how we can calculate the S phase. So you just add S phase plus you can add G2 phase. You can also add M phase. How do you know M phase? M phase is composed of two phases. M phase is mitosis plus cytokinesis. So during this phase, during this M phase, uh, mitotic cells, they are very easy to distinguish from interphasic cells because their DNA is compact, mitotic spindle formation is over there, and during cytokinesis you have almost two cells. They are just uh, going cytokinesis, cytoplasmic division from one cell, you are just getting two cells. So you can add mitotic cells, plus cytotic, uh, cytokine, uh, cy cells undergoing cytokinesis, from the total number of the cells, suppose you have thousand cells, out of 1000 cells, you have 50 cells which are in mitosis plus cytokinesis. That should give you mitotic index. What is mitotic index? Mitotic index is number of cells in mitosis uh, divided by total number of cells. So, M phase duration you can get if you will add mitotic cells plus cyto, uh, cells undergoing cytokinesis. And from the, if you will divide, with the total number of cells. So that should give you the duration of the M phase. So you combine these three. You sum up these three. It should give us the total cell cycle duration. Okay, but we are not getting total cell cycle duration by summing up these three phases. So it indicates some other uh, some other phase which we are not accounting here which we don't know over here that is missing that phase is called as g1 phase uh, g1 phase is after cytokinesis here you will be having mitosis then this part will be the cytokinesis after cytokinesis and before s phase before Synth uh, S phase, synthetic phase, there is one phase that is called G1 phase. It is also a preparatory phase for the cell. Okay, so uh, till now we got information about different stages of the cell cycle. So next question, next very important question in this field was, uh, we have mitotic cell, then we have interphasic cell, we have amphase cell, then we have interphasic cell. Amphase cell is almost circular, in, uh, interphasic cell is little bit irregular in shape. Here you have a one centrosome, from centrosome you have emanating microtubules. And uh, close by centrosome you have well demarcated nucleus, have a nuclear envelope and here you have uh, bipolar spindle okay so here, here you have bipolar spindle and all the chromosomes they are in the aligned at the metaphysic plate or they are trying to get distributed towards the daughter cells so next question was in the field uh, about the factor what is the factor that is governing the status of this interphasic cell? And what is the factor that governs the states of the M phase cell? M phase and interphase. So we can very well bio biochemically, metabolically, morphologically distinguish these two different stages of the cell cycle. So, next question, very important question was, is there any factor which is responsible for uh, maintaining the different states of these two cell stages? So, for that, cell fusion experiments were performed. 
cell fusion experiments. Cell fusion experiment, it was performed by one of the is one of the greatest experiment in this field. So the scientists which performed this experiment were Potorov and Robert Johnson in 1970s. Potorov, Potorov and Robert Johnson. 1970 in the University of Colorado what these scientists have done their motive was to find a factor to find out the factor which is responsible for maintaining the metabolic state of this intrinsic cell or mitotic cell they want to identify the factor if there is any factor what kind of factor is because uh, you see here that factor is very important. That is very crucial. That particular factor. If they found that particular factor, if they can identify that particular factor, because it will be crucial in determining the cell cycle, whether a cell has to progress or not. That factor will be very crucial. Uh, and another very important, uh, very important thing about this factor, about the cell cycle, understanding cell cycle is that because uh, if there is irregularity, if there is any abnormality in the cell cycle regulation, that can lead to the cancer. Okay, so uh, for that to understand that factor, Potorov and Robert Johnson, 1970, they performed this cell fusion experiment. What they have done? They fused cells, interphasic cell with the mitotic cell. Okay, they want to know what will happen to the status of these cells. If, suppose there is a factor which is present in the mitotic cell, that is responsible for the mitotic status. If we will fuse, we are allowing cytoplasms to mix up. So obviously that factor should act on the uh, nuclear envelope, that should act on the DNA of interphasic cell. You can see the interphasic uh, DNA is, it is unwound, uh, it is loosely, uh, loosely, loosely arranged DNA in the interphasic cell and during mitotic stage chromosomes they are very compact. So if a factor is present in the mitotic cell, that factor will obviously, it will try to compact the DNA in the uh, interphasic cell. If the factor, on the contrary, if the factor was present in the interphasic cell, that should uh, that should loosen the DNA in the mitotic cell. Okay, the results of the experiments were as such: if they are mixing mitotic cell with the interphasic cell, so it will compact the DNA of the mitotic cell. So what we can infer from this experiment, mitotic. Uh, interphasic DNA it was loosely, uh, loosely packed, but once we are fusing it with the mitotic cell, there is compaction of DNA. DNA will start to be compacting. It, it will compact. So it indicates that some factor from mitotic cell it is promoting the compaction of the DNA in the interphasic cell. Similarly, uh, so if G1 cell, G1 is also part of interface G1 cell was combined with the mitotic cell so uh, G1 DNA will, will start be compacting okay DNA will be compacting similarly if G2 cell was fused with the mitotic cell uh, G2 DNA will be it will undergo compaction one contrasting difference between G1 DNA and G2 DNA is that uh, G2 DNA's uh, thickness is double as that of G1 DNA. If it is uh, getting, it is getting more thicker over, uh, G2 DNA is getting more thicker as compared to G1 DNA. So 
that indicates during this G2 phase, DNA has already doubled. Okay, so DNA has doubled, so because of that, we have more thickness. Uh, one more experiment was, S phase is also part of interface. If we will combine, if we will fuse S phase DNA with M phase, uh, M phase cytoplasm, so here also compaction takes place, but during the process of compaction, DNA is breaking into small pieces, small DNA fragments. That's called pulverization. So, what is this pulverization? It is DNA is because M phase is giving it the signal that you should compact DNA. M phase cytoplasm factor present in the M phase cytoplasm that is uh, making this S phase DNA compact. But you know, during this S phase, this uh, DNA is being synthesized. So if DNA is being synthesized, so these cells, they will be having uh, some of the DNA which is not yet replicated. So if it will go premature compaction, that will be dangerous for the organism um, because it can cause aneuploidy, it can cause abnormalities, it can lead to un uncontrolled cell. Division. So there is one surveillance mechanism that promotes the degradation of the DNA if S phase is premature, S phase DNA is premature compacted by the uh, cytoplasm factor from the mitotic cell. So overall, what does this fusion experiment tell us? It tells that once a cell moves from interphase to mitosis, one factor is being synthesized that promotes this transition from interphase to the mitosis. Here is one factor. Uh, that factor, we'll talk about more about that factor, about maturation promoting factor and all those things. We'll talk in a separate lecture. Thank you.